Back in early December of 17, I posted a video about this extension Surrey top. And I showed how we did some repairs, straightened some sockets, and had to do some adjustments on the, the mainframe itself. So now we are at the point to where I need to upholster this, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to use some 3.5 inch jute webbing and we need to put it down the corners of the framework on, on each side. What this does, it kind of preloads the frame and takes all the slack out of it. So when we're to the point where we need to put the upholstery on, we have something solid in which to stretch the topping against. This frame sets fairly square, all the bows seem to be fairly in line. If it were not so, I would take some of this webbing and make a cross frame kitty corner to straighten up any bows that were out of a line. But on this top, we just need the, the webbing down each corner. The stapler I'm using is a Senco air stapler. It's called a GIMP stapler has a real small head and it's real similar to the old style carpet tacks that were used and if you watched when we disassembled this top you could see all the, the carpet tacks that were used on the original upholstery. So we want this webbing to be fairly tight as you'll see as we get through the process here that it'll actually be a means of support down each corner as we put the rest of the topping material on. So this is part of the inside structure that you seldom see when you see a buggy that's in a parade or being pulled down the road. But it is kind of essential. It's the main framework, the foundation uh, on which a whole top is built. So even though I saved the original upholstery when I took it off initially, I'm not going to use it much for measurements, but maybe just more for style. This is the old padding that laid on top of the webbing of the old top, but it's pretty dry, so I'm going to replace it. The white material is just a real thin fabric, but this black is a fabric that's oftentimes used underneath seats to hide the spring work. It's uh, fairly fibrous, pretty strong, but really thin. So I'm going to use this to replace that white material that we saw earlier. An interesting thing about upholstery is the similarities that it has to woodworking. Some of the material has flexibility, but some of it is very rigid, and so the precision in cutting has to be fairly exact. These pockets that are going to go down each side on top of the webbing isn't one of those things that is real precision. But it does factor in, and we'll see it the further we get into this project. Now I need one of these pockets to go down each side. And this little piece of material wasn't long enough 
to make both of them in one piece. The second piece is a little short, but since it's inside, it's, it's functional. It's not really a, a visual piece. I'm going to take and just add on a little extension piece on each end. It'll serve just what it needs to do. Once it's up inside, it's not something anybody will ever see. I have another roll that I could have done this in one piece, but it's really not worth the waste. So I'm going to quick just sew these together. I use a, it's a 40's uh, vintage Singer sewing machine, upholstery machine. And it's just a straight stitch, that's all it does. It doesn't do anything, it doesn't have reverse, all it does is sew forward. But generally, if you can fit it underneath the foot, it'll sew it. It's been a great machine. I got this from a, a relative who was a tailor in Bozeman and he used it for years and years. After he died, his wife didn't need it anymore, and so she donated it to us. She knew that we had a need, and it's been just a great machine. Now, inside these pockets, remember there was this uh, dry fiber material. Well, I'm going to put a cotton batting in there. You notice the strange pattern on it? You can probably guess where this came from. This is the cotton batting that was inside on top of the springs on a mattress. It comes in a big sheet and it works great. But I'm going to set these aside for a minute and we're going to work on the headliner. Now the headliner goes in and it's made of three separate panels. The center panel is going to wrap around the the two center bows. So I'm going to take that measurement and I'm going to check both sides. Make sure we're square. And the material I'm going to use is a black light material. Uh, it's kind of like a light canvas. It's actually called poplin. Probably know what that is. But it's been in a sack so I'm going to iron out some of the wrinkles and we're going to use this for the headliner material. Now before we get too deep into any kind of a sewing project, I like to preload some bobbins. I like to have six of them loaded up. So when I'm in the middle, I don't have to, to uh, unwind my thread from the machine just to wind a bobbin. I keep them wound up ahead of time so I can just keep going. And if you're familiar with sewing machines, sewing machines don't like dust, they don't like dirt. They like to be fairly clean and they like to be well oiled. I actually have four different sewing machines that I use and as the videos go on, I think we'll probably look at them all. So I'm going to find the width that I need for each panel. This is going to go on the inside, the lower side of the bows. So I'm going to find out what I need and then uh, find the center and, and start cutting out my panels. Now because the front bow and the back bow are lower than the center bows, the panel where it intersects the center panel has to be cut at a taper or to a little angle. And this is how I figure out what that needs to be. I'm trying to simulate as I cut that square panel and then factor in how it fits around the, 
the corner how much I have to take off and the, the front panel here I'm going to take off about two inches to get that bottom to intersect the socket below the joints. But the back panel only has to be about an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to cut off about an inch and a quarter in the corners to get that to intersect correctly. And, and as you see this in a, here in a little bit, it'll make more sense. So the first panel I'm going to cut out is going to be the center panel. And this actually is going to be the square panel. Now when I sew the front panel and the back panel to the center panel, I'm not just going to stitch them together, but I'm going to sew a little gimp welting that will actually kind of be the joining uh, between the two panels. So to make this gimp welt, I've cut a couple of thin strips, and then inside this I'm going to sew a light uh, cording material to make my gimp welt. I'm going to take off my regular straight foot and put on a gimp foot. This foot allows me to push up tight against the cord and sew right down the corner. Now you remember when we preloaded all the bobbins? I'm coming down sewing black thread on black material and thought I had it until I let loose. My bobbin ran out. Now this is where I figured in the two inches that I need to cut an angle on each side of this front panel. This is going to allow uh, this front panel to kind of bend around that curve and fit the center panel. I'm going to do this to both sides and then I'm going to take the gimp welt, pin it between the two, and then I'll sew these two panels together. So the front panel is underneath, you can see the curved ends, and the center panel that's square is on top. So I'm going to take and pin these two together, and then we'll sew down that gimp welt. Thank you. 
So I'm using the, the gimp edge inside to push up against the edge of the foot and find just where I need to sew the two together. And this will be the finished seam that will be visible inside. And I'll also do the same thing for the back panel. Now you can only imagine that black shows everything and this is a wood shop. So I'm going to cover up the frame with a sheet. Try to keep things a little more clean. I'm going to find the center. I've got it marked both on the headliner and on the uh, bow itself. And start to stretch the headliner on. And the edge of that gimp becomes the guide that I'm going to put right along the corner of the bow to keep it all in a straight line. So now with the center panel secure, I can start to stretch out the front and the back panels. And this whole time is watching for wrinkles, trying to pull it as straight and even as we can. And this is where having these uh, the jute webbing on each side having the top kind of preloaded so to speak is where it really pays off. And having this webbing cut back from the edge allows room for the headliner and the top material as it gets fastened. And once again, since the front and back bows are lower from the center, I've got a little taper that I'm going to level off 
and try to line up the sides of the headliner. So I'm reaching about the limit of my 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop here and we'll continue on with the next video finishing off the headliner and maybe getting into the top material. Leave your comments. If this is too involved, too boring, just let me know. Thanks again for watching.